All right, welcome back to the shop. Uh, it's just a quick little update video. I thought I'd put something out, um, you know, to come out on Thanksgiving morning. I figured a lot of guys might be sitting around wanting something to watch. So um, I'm going to do a little quick update on some stuff I've got going on with the uh, XR311. Um, I got a little sidetracked. I lost the transmission in one of my rock trucks. See that shaft down there? That shaft sheared. That's a direct drive shaft out of the transmit or out of the torque converter. So that threw me down about three days, threw me back about three days. Um, so I, I can't do anything for, for that for parts now until Monday. So that's on hold and now I can finish this. I should be able to finish this this weekend. I'm really hoping. Um, a couple things I've done. Uh, I redid the flooring in here. I found this uh, kind of diamond plate tread looking um, padded rubber stuff. I kind of did the whole, the whole bottom part of the tub. It had some rubber foam in there, but it looked terrible. It was real bad. I still have to do something to dress this back up. It had foam over that. I think I might put some diamond plate. Got the seats in. Got the seat belts coming. I had some seat belts that came in, and they were I ordered them. They were supposed to be a green color like this. They turned out to be a real bright green, so I can't use those. But I have some black ones coming in that I'm going to use. Um, so one of the problems that the customer had with this, or the owner had with this, was that... Um, you know the ride wasn't good and, and a lot of it was because of the posi um, differential front and rear in, and all-wheel drive so I, I put a disconnect unit on there so it's two-wheel drive unless he needs it he can pull a cable and he's got four-wheel drive um, I'll show all that in a final video um, but another part of the problem was was the shocks uh, I took it off for a ride again after getting you know the engine of trance back in getting it all running and here's the shocks that come off this thing I don't know if you can see the scale in the video here, but these things are massive for for something this size. This is the front shock, and this um, what was it made by? I think it was Gabriel. Yeah, Gabriel. And I looked up the part number, and this shock is made for a um, a passenger bus, like a full size bus. It's not the right shock for an off road vehicle. It's completely wrong. It's someone just found something that fit, I guess. Uh, but that's just stupid you match the shock to what you're doing, right? Um, we don't have a real tall overloaded bus. We have an off-road vehicle that needs the right rebound. I mean, everything, right? Um, and then here were the rear ones. Uh, I forget what brand they were, but it's Series 65 gas. They were like a gas pressure one. Um, they're just blown. You can watch it. It takes about five minutes for it to spring back out. Um, so they're just wasted. So I went down to Off-Road Warehouse over here in Temecula. And talk to the guys. And I brought those in and showed them what we have. Yeah, and this was the best solution that we could come up with. Um, you know, these Bilsteins. I love Bilstein shocks. You know, they're made in Germany. Um, real good quality. So we match the stroke that we need. You know, the compressed size and the extended size. And, you know, they got the, uh, the what do you call this? You know, the, the separate uh, nitrogen chamber. You know, that you mount separately. And... I think they're they're going to work pretty good. I know they're going to they're going to make this thing ride so much better. You know, I ordered Caterpillar hardware for it. I've got cat bolts. Um, found these bushings. You know, had to go online and find the right bushing that I, I've got to still cut these down a little bit on the lathe to make them fit because this. Uh, I already have the wheels back, and it might be hard to show you guys. But I uh, the the mounting brackets for these things are crazy. You know, it's a one inch hole, like for a one inch bolt. Let's see if we can crawl in here. I don't know if you can see if the light's good enough, but it's a one inch diameter, two inches across. So I, I found those bushings that are almost exactly what I need to fit in there. Um, it'll sell the rubber bushing and the shock and the five eighths bolts that I bought will fit right in here. There just won't be the metal sleeve in here, um, which is fine. And then these will just these will fit in the one inch hole. That's one inch OD right here between my fingers. And then it's got the flange, so they'll press in. I just have to shorten the length on them so they fit right in there so they'll sandwich and fit like that. So I think that's going to be a great solution. Um, hopefully I'll get those things in Friday or Saturday or whatever. And then one other issue I had um, that I just couldn't get over. This is the air cleaner that it had. I mean, I mean it's just an air cleaner. Somebody smashed the top down to make it fit because they didn't have the right size rod. And, you know, it sat on here, kind of covered everything. But when I put this fuel injection unit on, uh, for one thing, I'd have to get a spacer because uh, the throttle linkage here and the kickdown linkage for the trance is in the way, you know, it's hitting this. So I found it, you know, I found this one. 
it's kind of smaller diameter than it should be, but it's a, it's got a you know it's got a built-in riser on it. But the big problem is that the way that this thing cools, you know, this is a suck fan, so it's sucking air in from the back and then blowing it across the engine after it comes out of the radiator and blows it right to the air cleaner. So you're sucking all that hot air in. It's got this exhaust fan here, and I've got them both hooked up to the EFI control units. So I, I set the temperature to come on and come kick off. So this will exhaust some of the heat out of the uh, out of the engine compartment. It's got expanded metal on both sides, so it's getting flow that way, but it's getting no forward flow. The only air it's getting back here is air that's swirling around, and it gets sucked up in there. And I was having uh, problems with the, you know, as it got hotter, it was running different because it was sucking all that hot air in. Um, one thing, you can kind of see it from here, but if you look up inside there, I don't know if it's too dark in there, but there's some round brackets in there that held like a round canister. And originally when this was built, um, that was the air cleaner in there. And so it had a, you know, a unit that fit over here and then a tube, like a hose or a tube to, you know, to direct the air to, you know, to suck it to the air, well, from the air cleaner into the, to the throttle body or the carburetor. So it was getting fresh air. And the real reason I think they did that is because this thing, if you look on the videos when they were uh, testing these, when, when it was a prototype, they were driving this thing, you know, four foot of water, like three and a half, four foot of water. And um, you don't have to worry about any water splashing up or anything in here. It was in the compartment with the, with the drivers. So it was up in that dry area of the vehicle. So here's the solution I came up with. Um, just kind of pull all this stuff out of the box. So this is made by Spectre and it's, well, packaged really nice. Really surprised how nice it's packaged. Uh, pull that out of the little sleeve. And then I've got this aluminum um, adapter that, that'll fit. Sorry about the camera I'm bouncing all around here. It's going to sit on top of the carburetor like that. And then the hose will hook up. And then it's, I'll show you the rest in a minute. But, you know, going with these, these handmade valve covers I found. And that, I mean, this thing's gonna look so much better. It's gonna, it's not gonna look like something that was put together at Pep Boys anymore. It's gonna look like something that was built for the military. Um, so it's, that's cool. I'm really excited about this. And it's got an air filter that is it like an inline. Here's the air filter, and it's got a cone. Completed uh, air filter element inside there. You take apart. So this is going to mount in here somewhere. I'm just setting it there. Um, but it's probably going to mount in the corner up there. And then it's got like a pickup um, deal. Well, that's not it. That's a bracket. Got hose clamps. Got hose adapters and collars. So it should have in here a hose. And the end of the hose, the end unit. Or those little rubber sleeves. And here's the hose. You stretch the hose out to wherever you want to go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch that out. I'm going to mount that. It's going to mount on here. And then I think I'm going to put the pickup right outside there along the side of the vehicle. So it's going to be sucking air in over here. So it's just getting fresh air from outside. Um, that or maybe some type of scoop thing or something like that. But that's going to cure my problem of getting all that hot air in here. You know, it's one thing, you know, they always talk about a cold air intake. Well, this thing had a cooking hot air intake. All the exhaust rolled up here with nowhere to go. Because it's not like the front of a car where at least you have air blowing through it all the time. This thing here, it's stagnant. The only way air moved out was this fan up here and whatever the you know the radiator fan forced out past the sides so this is going to be a great solution and i think it's going to be really good looking you can just imagine it all hooked up i'm not going to bother hooking it up tonight you guys can wait for the next video it's going to come out probably i don't know maybe this at the end of this weekend you know maybe sunday or something like that that's going to the finished product in here and i thought there was one more piece to it i'm gonna to have to look up online but i thought there was another piece like a uh, that you mounted I think I might be missing a piece, but um, it's not a big deal. If I am, I just make up something. I'll make some kind of scoop or some type of bracket or something to hold that. But anyways, that's it. That's just a quick update on this. Hopefully this thing will be done this weekend so I can ship it back to the owner. And um, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. 
share with a friend who you think might be interested in this stuff. And, uh, you know, have a good Thanksgiving. I'll talk to you later. Bye.